As soon as I opened this picture, I immediately knew the type of uh, filter that I wanted to apply to it. And the filter is a new one. It first emerged in Elements 11. It is also in Elements 12. But before we apply that filter, it works better on a reduced size image. Let's go up to Image. We're going to come down to Resize. We're going to go to Image Size, which is going to open up this dialog box. This is the pixel dimension. Coming down, we have got the document size. This is showing the document size in inches, but of course you can change it to any of these, whichever one you're comfortable working with. The resolution, that is set to 300 pixels per inch. Now, because this document is, or because the image is actually a portrait image, in other words, it's on the height, I'm going to come up to the pixel height, going to swipe across. It was 3,456, and I'm going to type in 2000 so we're going to reduce it down to 2000 pixels per inch there's the original document size 22.8 we're going to reduce it down to 7.63 as soon as I click on OK using command 0 control 0 to bring it back to fit on screen over to the layers panel using command J control J that's command J control J to duplicate the background layer going up to filter we're going to drop down to sketch coming over to Graphic Novell. This is the filter that I had in mind as soon as I saw the image. And let's just have a quick look around. Down the bottom, we have got the zooming in. We have got the zooming out tools. We've got the hand tool, which is the default. Click on this one. It'll take you into the 100%. Click on this one. It will take you back to fit in view. But there's more. With the hand tool selected, you can bring it up onto the image. If you right click, now these are all the various zoom options you have available to you. You can go back to uh, actual pixel size, which is 100%. You can go to fit in view, much the same as you can with these icons here. We're in at 100%. I just want to back out a little bit, so I'm going to click on 66%. There it is, we've now zoomed out a little bit. Hand tool, we can move ourselves around into this position here. Coming over on the right hand side, we've got the presets. Just keep an eye on these sliders. Now, when I click on the various presets, I'm going to start with the painted grey, and you can see yes, it looks painted, and yes, it looks a little bit grey. Go into the fine detail, look at the way those sliders have moved around. Like the way this is looking, particularly around the window, the swirly effect, and like what it's doing to the window ledge, those broken timbers. Yeah, it looks particularly good. Hard edges, and uh, yeah, I'm not particularly keen on this one, but you can see the effect. This could work on some images, so make sure you try out all the presets. Come into the twisted plot, you'll notice the way the sliders have moved around here. These are clean and contrast right up to its maximum of 8 and 10. That looks, yeah, a bit dark, but uh, some of the effect there looks pretty good. I've got a feeling with this one, I'm going to come back to the fine detail. We can now come to the sliders themselves. Just make a, a quick mental note of the number there, 3, because then you can come in, you can start exper Yeah, it's a bit light, isn't it? Bringing it back the other way. If you go too far the other way, it becomes a bit dark. So I'm just going to back this up. Sometimes, though, the slider gets just a little bit fiddly. If you come to the actual name there, Darkness, you'll notice with all of these, as soon as you bring your cursor over them, you get a finger with the arrow going through it. You can now click down and you can move it around. That works really well. Just bring it up a little bit and just release it back where it was. Yeah, 3.27. Looks good. Right, clean look. Clicking on the clean look, take it up a little bit, just back a little bit more. To drop it down. No, I'm going to take it up into this area. That looks good. Something around this position here. You can tell the concentration, can't you? Just drop it back a little bit more. OK, let's come down to the contrast. As you take the contrast up, you make the image a lot darker. Drop it down, you make it uh, quite a bit brighter. I'm going to bring it up into this area there. Perfect. Not going to touch it anymore. And down to the thickness. And if we take the thickness up, yep, yeah, becomes very thick. Drop it down a touch or two. And I like the effect just about here. Great stuff. Clean look again. I'm just going to come quickly back to this slider. Just making some final adjustments, or should I say just checking them out. Just bring it up a little touch or two more on this particular one. Again, this tends to work better. Great, that'll do nicely. I'm going to click on OK. The filter is now going to be applied across it races, and in it pops. 
talking of init pops, we're going to pop into the image using command or control. So press and hold down command or control. Now press the number one key. So pressing number one, you pop straight into 100%. With the hand tool selected, I can click down. I can move my way around the image. I'm going to come to this area here. Really like the way this effect has uh, been applied to the image, but we got no color. We got no detail. We need to blend it in with our background layer. To do that, there was a clue in the word, blend it in. We're going to come to blend modes. We're going to click on this. Now there's three in particular which are going to work really well. That is overlay, soft lights, and luminosity. We're going to start with overlay. We're going to click on this, watch what happens. Like this effect, that works really well, doesn't it, on overlay. Yeah, we've got some nice, you can see the vine. I think it's a, an ivy there. And uh, if we come to the opacity as well, dropping down the opacity as we start to drop it down, we can see that blistered paint effect that's coming through as well. We've got some nice work on that timber there, like the swirls we've got around the window, the leaves. So scroll around, take a look, see how it's uh, working out. I think we can afford to drop it down into this area. So that timber's coming through nicely there on the, the wall. Yeah, I've still got the effect. So overlay, that looks pretty good, around about the 41 with the opacity. Let's give a soft lights a try. There's soft lights, you can see much more detail now in the uh, the actual wood paneling. I think with this particular one though, we need to take the opacity back up. We need to go to something in round about the 80%, 87, that looks good there. One more to try, let's give luminosity. So experiment with it, look at the way this has now applied it. Lovely painterly effect. So what works on one image may not necessarily work on another image. So make sure you try out all of these and don't forget, every time you use a blend mode, use the opacity as well. That looks pretty good like this. I've got a feeling we need to just drop it down into that area there. So we've now got that blistered paint work coming through. Like what that's doing to the window. I've got a feeling I'm actually going to change my mind. I've always gone for the uh, overlay. Let's just check out overlay one more time. Let's just scroll back up to it. Overlay's a, a lot darker, isn't it? Let's just come back to the uh, luminosity. I'm going to go with luminosity. I'm going to make a change. Right, OK. Something else we're going to do is we're now going to use the adjustment layer. So we're going to click on this half black, half white. And we're going to select hue saturation. When hue saturation opens, that's the adjustment layer here. We're going to come to the master, and I've got a feeling these leaves here are going to be red, so I'm going to click on this, call it a hunch. But going to red, we've now got the eyedropper tool. This will allow us to select the eyedropper tool and make sure we you know, target the right color. So I'm just going to click in here. Just look at the way this has shifted. That's the actual color we have targeted. Catching hold of the saturation slider, taking it down. That red has disappeared, bringing it back. There it is. We're going to increase it. We're going to take it up into an area which we don't usually go to. Well, I certainly don't, which is a, an extreme of plus 49. OK, let's just zoom down. So I'm just going to use my scroll and down we pop. I've got a feeling the leaves aren't usually green, so we're going to change the channel to green. Still got the eyedropper tool. Let's bring it out. Let's click on the leaves here. Yes, it's green. You can see the way the slider moved again. Saturation, if I just drop it down, look at the way that this... Uh, piece of ivy is still staying with that yellowy red. We've got a red leaf in here. And if we bring the saturation back up again, this is going to be all about the effect and the color. So taking it up to round about that area, don't leave Hugh out of the equation as well. You give Hugh a bit of a outing and move him around and just take the saturation up a little bit more. You can see the way we can bring those uh, leaves into different colors. Let's just take it up. You see very lime greeny if we bring Hugh too far. I'm just going to take it back to where it was. I think it was minus 12. Really like that. I'm bringing it up again into this area. Clicking on the little cross. That has closed it down, but there it is. If I just use Command 0, Control 0, we're going to go out to Fit on Screen. There's the image itself. I'm going to bring my cursor out. I'm going to right click. So bring your cursor out into the work area, anywhere where you've got the gray. And I'm going to select black. Why am I doing this? Because I think black, you can actually see the colors better in the image. We're going to zoom in. Now I'm just going to press uh, command spacebar or control spacebar. We're going to zoom into this sort of area here. If it stayed still, it would help, wouldn't it? Taking a look around, really like the way this is working. There's the effect on the image. I think one more blend mode. Let's drop down to uh, brightness and contrast. 
Now with brightness and contrast, you can see the way we can come into the image. Just going to darken it down very slightly into that area, the contrast as well. Just taking a look at this, taking the contrast up very, very slightly. That looks pretty good. like the way that's working. And if we just switch this on and off, you can see the difference that makes to the image. And look how we bring out the blister on the paintwork. If you think it's a little bit too much, just come to the layer with the adjustment layer on and just reduce down the opacity a little bit into this area here. Now, once you've done this, save the image. Make sure you save it in layers. Why? Because in layers you can come back to this. This is, a, after all, it's going to be a history of what you've actually done to the image. Always a good idea as well. Let's just call this what it is. I'm going to call it Novell after Graphic Novell. It's the fill to be applied to it. There's the hue saturation. You can double click. You can come back to this. You can see the exact numbers you put in. So always work in layers. Save it in layers. Like the way this is. Uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Just the sort of effect I was after using Command and or control and number one so command control number one using the tab key to remove all the panels there's the image at 100 percent you see really nice effects and the way it's come through into this part just scrolling down great stuff okay using command zero control zero back to fit on screen and i'm going to use the tab key there's the finished image go on give it a try i must be honest the first time i saw this effect it was one of the members on my website uh stuart i think it was did some pictures of flowers absolutely stunning using this as i say very reminiscent of the oil paint effect in photoshop and that uh i forgot what it's called now um yeah that filter i'll put the name on the screen i mentioned earlier so go on give it a try but until the next time it is happy imaging and take care